War Games Atlantic Persian Infantry. I've got three boxes of these suckers. They are some of the First Empire sets that War Games Atlantic has uh, been releasing. Um, these were on pre-order, and as I said, I got three boxes here. I'm splitting a box and a half with a friend, so I won't be uh, getting another, all three boxes of these guys. But in any case, I thought I would open these guys up because it's really exciting to see plastic Persians come into play. The only other option for plastic Persians prior to these lads was War Games Factory. And here are some War Games Factory. These are some of the first two historicals I ever painted, and then I stopped doing Persians. I have truckloads of these guys, and I always intended to paint them. I will paint them, but it's just really cool that War Games Atlantic came out with their own Persians. Now, they're not the only ones coming out with Persians. Um, Victrix is releasing a line as well. So, if you are into the wargaming era of ancients, and you like the Greek versus Roman Greek versus Roman, I should say, the Greek versus Persian or the Alexandrian era, now is an awesome time because there are going to be War Games Atlantic stuff, probably more coming out I assume, and uh, there's also going to be uh, Victrix releasing cavalry and other types of infantry. Um, but yeah, let's look at this box and uh, start to uh, observe it before we open it here. Start really quickly, you've probably read everything as I've been talking here, I mean it comes with 40, it looks like 40 multi-bar hard plastic figures, so you get 40 guys in a box, which is good for a decent sized unit. Um, on here, you see a bunch of different shields. You've got the Spara shield, the Spara Bara, that's a very uh, a common, I guess, uh, infantry type in the uh, Persian Empire, where they have the row of wicker shields, and then archers stand behind them, right? There's some spearmen in there, you get a violin shield, as it's called, and you get those crescent shields, those moon shields as well. I also noticed that they actually have the proper standard. I always see the artwork where the uh, Persian standards or some, maybe he's a leader, I don't know, but they've always got like a, I don't know if that's a wolf or some sort of uh, coyote or something, but they've got some fur wearing guys I often see in the artwork. So that's pretty cool. Check the back here. Um, I won't read everything on the back, you can get the box or check it yourself. They've got some artwork on the back, some more examples of the models. Uh, they have a bunch of different heads in this box, which we'll look at soon, but that's the first thing I noticed. Uh, unlike the uh, War Games Factory models and the one type of Persian head, I think they put in the Median head. I'm not quite sure if it's Median, or it says right here, they got Median, Lydian, and the Babylonian. So I think they've kind of mixed all three head types in there. All right, I cheated, I didn't film the opening. It's hard when you're using the iPhone on its side. Can I, proper unboxing, you have to film everything from start to finish, right? <laughs> All right, so it's well packed full of sprues. Um, there's no instruction manuals or bases with this, and that's very normal for a lot of uh, historicals. I find sometimes you do get some little instruction booklet or some sort of guide, like Perry's Plastic will put in some flags and some color ideas. These guys have just put in sprues. Um, Perry's also have bases sometimes, but a lot of companies, they either have them or they don't. But these sprues, looking at them at first glance, all look to be identical. I'm just gonna see if that's the case. There are one, two, three, four, five. There's five guys per sprue, and I immediately noticed that you unfortunately won't be able to easily modify at least one guy, so there's gonna be at least one archer per sprue that you kinda of have to use, unless you chop off his arm and, and work with him, right? So that's the one thing to notice. Let's see how many sprues in here, if they're identical. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sprues, eight times five is 40. So, okay, so there's no special command sprue. I assume that it's going to be on the sprue itself. But let's quickly take a look at all the different things on this sprue. Let's get a close up on some of these heads. I'm already liking what I see. <laughs> They're both upside down and right side up, but... So we got a guy without any headdress on. I'm gonna call him a Babylonian. Here I see what I uh, figure Persians would have. I think they call them tiaras in that time, that kind of like floppy hat thing. That's what I, I, I think of Persians when, I, when I'm looking at uh, Persian min miniatures. That's what... Uh, I think a lot of Victrix models have and War Games Factories, uh, War Games Factory has. Uh, I'll flip, I'll follow them on the right side up here. More 
unarmored heads, which I think is really awesome because not every guy might have a hat on. And then at the end here, I'm assuming these are Median. I don't know if these would be Persians or Medians, but this kind of cap thing, it's kind of what I, I think of when you look at the later Persian Empire, the Sassanids. I don't know if I'm even pronouncing that right. It's Sassanid. I keep saying Sassanid, but whatever. <laughs> and then you got a guy with this massive helmet on here. I think that some guys would have armor. I'm not sure how many of them would have it. Flipping to the other side here. Again, we have another guy with that kind of cap. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's in the Achaemenid... Uh, wall reliefs where they have both kind of hats. So maybe it's not just a Sassanid thing. Maybe they had it throughout. We have this guy who has some sort of pelt on. I'm going to assume it's a wolf. I'm not sure. But I think that's awesome that they've got the proper guy with a, uh, a wolf hat on. Because that that's uh, something that I haven't seen in the other War Games factory. They just gave you a, a, a flagpole, I think. And then we've got these guys here which have facial covers. And uh, yeah, that's a typical Persian look, I think, for a lot of war gamers. We've got some basic crescent shields here. I think they're a little bigger than what uh, War Games Factory puts on their fellows. They have a basic horn. And I mean, let's check the other side of them. Yeah, okay, so they do have two sides. You get the wicker look, which is appropriate. Um, I think that's supposed to be the inside. And then this is the outside where you can paint on. I might be wrong. We won't look exactly at all these arms, but the arms look pretty standard. They're definitely much more detailed than War Games Factory. You can't blame War Games Factory, though. They were an older company, so their details aren't all there. Another head there. There's so many head options. So, I mean, you, you can model these guys as, you could say they're Babylonians, Lydians, uh, Persians, Medians, whatever you want. There are some spear arms here, which are just single spears. Uh, I'm not going to pop any off yet. I just want to let you guys see. They're kind of the skinny spears. I'm not a big fan of skinny spears. But it's probably okay because if you make them like Spada Bada, you don't need that many spears. You just want enough for the unit to go through. You got some, another spear. There's a two-handed spear here. So you don't have to give them a shield. You can just make them a two-handed. Got a guy drawing an arrow here. Here's the body size. It looks like we've got some sort of, I'm not going to say it's scale, but some sort of uh, webbed or scale armor. I guess it depends how you paint it. We've got the open quiver there. And these quivers are also in the other War Games Factory and other, other sets I've seen, and the metal. So this quiver is, is accurate in depiction, I think, to what the Persians are depicted as having. Let's look at this archer here. Um, and he's shooting off in the air. He's going to shoot a long shot, I assume. He's got a sword on his right side. Is that his right side? Is that a sword? Yeah, he's got like a dagger or a sword there. I don't know if they wore it on their right side or their left side. I think they may have. It's something the Romans did. The Persians may have as well. If, if, if I, I have to research that, but I kind of vaguely remember reading something that they wore kind of like a dagger or a weapon on their right side. I think uh, it's Herodotus or some someone who mentions that. There's so many heads in this pack. That's awesome. You're not just going to go with like one head in this set if you want more. <laughs> There's tons. So here's some violin shields. And I already know that these violin shields, they are bigger than what War Games Factory puts in. Uh, nonetheless, I think they had probably different variants. So mixing them would be okay. Some more spears. Another bow arm. So you can make at least how many bows per sprue? You can make uh, one, two, there's two free bow arms that I'm counting here. And then there is a single um, bowman that's already pre-made. So in total, you can make uh, 24. <laughs> the math in my head is like, blah, 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 blah. slow on the math today. Um, yeah, you can make 24 archers out of this pack. And I'm also noticing now, let's look up at these beautiful Sparta shields. I think they're really good. They're plenty big and I think it should be a big wall but I'm noticing here now that there's only two of those per per sprue so that's not bad because if you've got eight sprues here you can at least make 16 guys like that and depending on how you build your units I guess you could make 24 archers and then you could put a row of spar in front so you you can definitely make I think a decent unit of spar bar out of this whole box which is good so, uh, yeah, I think they maybe have mixed in things here better than I first calculated. 
Uh, let's look at some of these bodies. You've got a basic tunic here. Again, on the right side, the sword. I, that must be historically accurate. I think I'm recalling reading something about that now as I keep going, as I mentioned. We've got more guy with like a, more guys with like a almost, uh, I'm gonna call it leather. A leather crossing armor. And this is cool. They have a, de this is definitely like a scale here. And uh, you don't see that in the War Games Factory fellows. The War Games Factory guys are just lighter infantry with robes. These guys actually have some armor on their guys, and I think that makes sense if you want to do immortals or other types of troops. Um, that's essentially it on the sprue here, and all the sprues are identical. Overall, it's an awesome kit from the looks of it. Lots of different head options if you want to mix up your troops or make them look a certain way. If you don't want to do spotter bar, you got plenty of options to do like other types of troops with different shields. They claim that these guys could be used up until the Alexandria era, and I'm thinking that's a fair assessment for certain troops. I, I have some arguments with some people online sometimes <laughs> about how long did the Sparabara last. I, I don't know if they lasted all the way up to Alexandrian era, but I'm pretty sure these crescent shields and these different violin shields could have been something you've seen. So, so I, I think it's fair to say that you could use these anywhere from... Uh, I guess basically the start of the Persian Empire right up till its end. Now, the one thing I really want to know is how are they going to line up with my War Games Factory guys? Because my War Games Factory guys are Legion. I found a huge deal, a couple deals on eBay one day, and I just splurged. I think that was like a couple years ago. Not a couple, more like when I first started historicals. I thought I was going to do them, but then I got into Romans instead. But I bought tons of War Games Factory fellows. So let's see some differences here just by holding them up. You can already tell, I'll go in closer there, that the shields in the War Games Atlantic kits are going to be bigger than what you get in War Games Factory. So if you want to have these already, you want to add to your collection, keep that in mind. I personally don't think that really matters because they're not really meant to be used as a, a single shield on their own. I think they're meant to build a wall, a wicker wall, as you often see in depictions. Like, I can't imagine uh, uh, swinging a weapon around with a big old wicker shield. I think it's to block arrows and stuff more so than uh, actually engage. I could be wrong about that. But uh, anyway, I think, I think the bigger shields here are more appropriate for that wall kind of tactic. Um, I don't have them out right now. They're put away in storage, but I can already tell you the violin shields and the uh, crescent shields are different. They're different sizes. Again, I don't think that matters. I think those kind of shields could be all over the place from manufacturer or, or preference, depending who's using it. Um, the quivers here too in War Games Atlantic are bigger, I want to say, than the War Games Factory quivers. Again, I, I have to uh, pull them out and see, so don't quote me on that, but I, I think these are okay for size. Um, it definitely looks like you could fit a bunch of arrows and the bow inside that quiver, which is what they were meant to do, so I think that's fine. These spearmen, though, do they have the balls on the end, the golden up? Yes, they do. I should point that out. You see that there? A lot of the, um, the what are they called? The immortals are described of having these uh, apple these golden apple bottoms on their on their spears so yes you can paint them gold or, or bronze or whatever and uh whatever color they were i forget right now but uh, yeah you can make them into immortals the bows on the uh surprisingly i think the war games factory lads are a, a bit more uh fancy looking on their bows and the bow that you get with these uh war games atlantic guys are not as fancy but either way i think both bows are good just wanted to show that there quick. <laughs> All right, let's try and prop my phone up. <laughs> All right, head size. I want to say they're almost dead on. Um, like if you look at that Babylonian head there with the War Games Factory, they're so close to the head size. I would say you could almost interchange them. You could probably put these heads on the War Games Factory guys or vice versa and you'd be fine. Let's look at another one here. Let's put this uh, Median head next to it. I won't do all of them, but... Oh, that's a decent... That's a good size. It might be a little bigger on War Games Atlantic, but from a distance, I don't think you'd really notice. 
and these are meant to be bigger models. I mean, they're not small, and they're they're they're, they're, they're I'm not gonna say they're heroic uh, fantasy, but I think they're a little bigger than average on their on some of their proportions. But that's okay if you are using lots of Victrix and lots of War Games Factory. You are okay with that, I think. Okay, so I use some. Uh, I'm not using anything to stick together that spearman's arm, and um, he's kind of. I built him a little awkward just quickly, and I've got some blue sticky tack on the back holding up his head. But you can see here the size comparison when something's actually built that the um, War Games Atlantic is slightly taller than the War Games Factory. But proportion wise, I, I would think that it's probably better. <laughs> and um, size wise, they're not that different, really. I mean, the heads are of similar size, as I said, it's just their height's a little different. And not everyone's the same height. So I think that would be okay. The only thing I didn't like about taking this off though was this spear. I absolutely hate skinny plastic spears. I love the thick Roman ones that come in the um, in the old Victrix models. I don't like the new ones. This guy here has a separate plastic spear, but the difference is that it's glued on badly there, I should say. <laughs> it's my first model. Um, but these guys' hands are all open. That's the advantage of War Games Factory, despite them being older models. All of their hands are open. You're free to put any kind of spear you want into it. I will give them wire spears when I, when I get around to doing them, because, or, or thick plastic spears, because I just hate these skinny things. Okay. So, yeah, you can see here that uh, War Games Atlantic has made an awesome product, and I think it's going to look really cool when we start seeing more people paint all their Persians. I think personally for myself and War Games Atlantic, I'm going to keep my War Games Factory guys as the Sparabara. And because I'm only going to have um, a limited number of these War Games Atlantic guys compared to my large uh, War Games Factory lads, I think I'm going to make more, um, what would you call them, skirmisher units out of these and also build some alternative units or maybe just spearmen or maybe I make them the immortals or something like that. So they don't have to have all of those uh, those, uh, those archers behind them. They all are archers and immortals. Alright, so I think it's going to be an awesome kit. I definitely think there's more detail in the War Games Atlantic plastics for just like curves and, 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 and folds in the clothes and stuff like that. They paid a lot of more attention to, um, I think, where the weapon's supposed to sit. Different heads and stuff. So for a plastic set, I think they're going to be awesome. They will fit up nicely with Victrix because they are in a similar size range. And when Victrix comes out with their Persian plastics, it's going to be very interesting to get some and compare it to all three here. So, all right. Well, that's the unboxing for today. I want to thank you guys for watching and thank you for subscribing to this channel if you have. If you haven't and want to see more content like this, please subscribe and like this video. And we will see you next time. Have a good one.